kwetu. Than other people in the world. Na watu wengine duniani. And they accepted the blood of Jesus. Na wakakubali mwili wa Yesu Kristo kwa maisha yao. Wewe Слушайте, ну тут вокруг, вокруг церкви вообще не бывалая тусовка. Везде люди разбились по группам. А в каждой группе что-то обсуждается, идет какие-то репетиции, какие-то действия с детьми. Что-то, что услышали, сегодня тут же сразу ищутся пути практики, практикования. О, тут танцы какие идет. О, а тут ребята драму какую-то репетируют. В общем, здесь тоже что-то сейчас будет. Да, у нас тут живенько, у нас тут живенько, друзья. У нас тут очень живенько. И самое главное, чего нас не хватает, это у нас не хватает вас. So, dear friends, right now you are with the Go with Christ, Go with Mission. Our missionaries from Sacramento, they were here for Two weeks, right girls? Two weeks. And today is our last day with a labushki and a little tea. Go ahead, tell us what you think about mission in Kenya. Is it is it something that should be done or you better stay home? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course not to stay home. It's very important. There's a lot of people who are very hungry to learn and to grow and to expand their villages and they truly want to grow their church and grow in Christ and so much. So it's a great mission and everyone should take an opportunity at least once in their life to come down here. Uh, Mount Dalgon has so much potential. There's so many just amazing, amazing people there. We just, we just, they just really just lack that knowledge, which we have. Uh, if you're, you know, part of, you know, Europe, United States, you have that knowledge. So you like owe it to the rest of the world to, to pass that on, not just to keep it for yourself. Those people are going to take it and like run with it, um, not just going to listen and just forget about it. So it's it has a lot of potential, uh, unlimited potential, I would say, because there's just so much that you can do with um, whatever talents and you know desires God has given you. Uh, you were in the equator zone. It was hot here, so. Uh, my question to the girls, are they been resting under the sun tan? No tanning under the sun, of course. Uh, Intentionally. We were, <laughs> Intentionally. <laughs> we're next to the equator, so it's very hot. We actually got burnt in the sun because we were outside teaching for several hours, and even our sunblock wasn't enough, and we came home really red. We're probably still a little bit red right now. Um, every single day we were packed from morning till late, late afternoon to teach people, give them training, and help them grow. The people are just amazing, so friendly, so welcoming, so eager to receive what God has placed inside of us and to receive it and learn and grow and expand it and spread it to their whole community. I believe we went to Ite, John Power, and... Malin. Malin. Yeah, we went to several places. Is there any other needs you see that must be fulfilled by someone who knows what to do? Yeah, one of the biggest um, needs, I would say, in this region is education. Um, most of the people can't afford to send their kids to school, so the kids just kind of hang out all day and just do chores, um, and they're, they don't have the opportunity to go to school. And these kids are not just like five years old, these kids are even like older, so it's like for me as someone that loves education and just 
you know, that growth experience, it's like, it's hurting my heart to see these kids not even be able to read or write. And as you can see behind me, we have a little church and it seats about 30 to 40 people. But behind those 30, 40 people, we have hundreds of kids. And these kids live in these conditions, as you see here, uh, very poor and there is no school nearby. So we want to use every one of these churches that are here at Mount Elgon, and there's many. We want to use every one of them um, as a resource during the week to bring the kids in and start this education process. But we need the desks, we need supplies to make this happen because truly, uh, this is the next generation. Whenever people speak about Africa, they're like, oh, it's such an expensive trip and they don't want to come. So what do you think? Is mission affordable? I would say you have to look at what the kind of result you're going to produce. Are you looking at how expensive it's going to cost you? Or are you looking at the fruit? Because when you come here, you're producing fruit not only in your own life, but in the kingdom of God. And it's not like it's costing a person $10,000. It's a few thousand dollars, and it's something that's, within the ability of each and every single person. So when you look at the long lasting result, I wouldn't say it's too themselves with soap, wash their clothes, and they would form habits of coming and walking around clean in their village and that it would spread to their families and become a part of their culture. They always say like whatever you're passionate about, yes. you're 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 gonna find ways to do it. Uh, so if you're passionate about it, uh, just ask God for wisdom and he'll, you know, give you the wisdom to just cut some stuff out or, you know, make a little bit more money on the side doing like extra stuff and then you'll be able to save up and come. It's totally doable for sure. Come to go with Christ. Go with mission, and we'll do mission together. Huh? Yes. So praise the Lord. Welcome. Noma, noma, noma. Yani moto, yazambe. Ha 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 ha.